Hi, welcome to the Mike Page Doodle Club. I'm Mike Page, and today we're going to be celebrating Independence Day with a Minuteman, a flag, and some fireworks. So grab a pen or a pencil, some paper, and then let's get right into it. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. The important thing is that you make your mark. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com. No matter where you are, that's parkstreetbooks.com. This drawing is going to have a lot going on. I'm going to show three different things, and you can do all three, or you can kind of pick the thing that you feel will be most to your ability level. I'm going to start with a flag. So to do that, I'm going to make a flagpole, just two vertical lines. Ideally, you keep them relatively parallel. Um, I'm going to go across at the top. I didn't go straight across. I just barely made it rainbow shaped. There's a slight bump there. Uh, and then I'm going to make a circle at the top and kind of scribble shade the bottom part, give it a little shadow. Um, for the flag, this is important. Don't make a straight line. Don't make a straight line. You want your flag to look natural. Now, you could have a flag that's just hanging on a non-windy day. That would be kind of boring. So for our flag, we're going to kick the pen out twice. Notice how I tried to have the same bend both times. It's important that you keep your lines kind of parallel. Then I'm going to come down and connect that. Now right now you're going, Mike, that's way too short of a flag. That's completely wrong. I agree. I'm not done yet. And neither are you. We're going to curve back like that. And then we're going to make another line down. If you saw the episode where we made tattoo banners several weeks ago, this is very much the same idea. Um, so you're going to add a little curve. Now, pay attention to how much space is here, and we're going to come down about the same amount at the top, and then we're going to curve up like that. And then kick your pen down. I went a little bit too far. Hopefully you stopped right at the edge. Uh, then we're going to make A rectangle up here. Again, this line is curving down or curving like a rainbow to match the top. Uh, this whole area will be filled with stars. I'm just going to kind of scribble this in. Uh, my experience is when when you draw a flag, if you try to draw every single star, a you'll lose your mind. B it won't come out quite how you hoped anyway. It'll, it'll never be perfect. Uh, my advice would be just kind of scribble this in, make sure to leave some white spaces. Then we want 13 stripes. And this is going to be kind of guesswork here. Two, three, four. The top one would be red. Hey, look at that, I've got a red pen right here. Top one's going to be red. And the bottom one is also red. So we've got 13 stripes, seven are red, and six are white. Of course, the stripes were for the original colonies. There were 13 original colonies, so there are 13 stripes on the flag. You probably already knew that, but if you didn't, there you go. So, so far we've got five stripes. Oh boy. I don't know that I made the flag the right size for the width of these stripes. Oh, you know what I didn't do, which I'm immediately realizing now? I didn't draw the left side of the flag. Normally I wouldn't have just a straight line down here. I would have come out slightly like that. I forgot to do that. I apologize if you are already too far in. 
So let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stripes. That white one there makes eight. This red one will be nine. Ten and eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to squeeze this right there because I didn't quite have enough space. I came close, didn't quite make it. So there's our flag. Again, when you're, when you're drawing the flag, um, you kind of, you try to get as close as you can, but it's, it's tricky getting all 13 stripes in, and it's very tricky getting all the stars in. Um, do your best, have fun with it. Um, then next we're going to do some fireworks. As you're drawing your fireworks, I think I'll actually stick with that red pen. As you're drawing your fireworks, you're basically just going to kick the pen out a whole bunch of times, a whole bunch of directions. You don't want any that are just perfectly straight lines. So a long time ago, I did an episode where we drew palm trees. This is kind of the same as when you start a palm tree, except I'm going to make a lot more lines. Um, this would actually work better if I was using a marker, like a Crayola Super Tip marker works really well for this, uh, because then as you kick out, you're also getting a tapering line with it, uh, which tends to look really good. Um, as you go too, don't forget to make kind of varying lengths of lines. And if you're drawing a bunch of fireworks, have them at different um, points within their explosion. So we might even do like a little bit of the little cloud here and the little streak coming down. This one is just starting to explode. Either that or it's a lot further away. If you've ever flown on a holiday where there are fireworks going off, it can be really neat flying and just seeing a whole bunch of fireworks displays happening all over the place. Um, I prefer to still actually be at the fireworks displays, um, but if you have to travel on a holiday like that, the, the one benefit is that you get to see a lot of fireworks. Unless you don't have a window seat, womp womp. Stinks to be that guy, huh? Somebody's got to sit on the aisle. If uh, you're enjoying fireworks this 4th of July, please be sure to keep your dogs out of the way of fireworks. Dogs don't like fireworks. Even the dogs that are willing to tolerate fireworks would much rather not have to deal with them. Um, so please keep your four-legged friends in mind when celebrating Independence Day. All right, the last thing we're going to do is our Minuteman. This one's going to be a little more complicated. Uh, so this is kind of the, bi the big one for, for this episode. Um, I'm going to ignore the overall scene that I have going on here. Uh, so my Minuteman is going to look very large relative to everything else, but that's so that you guys can still kind of see the detail that's happening. So I'm going to start with his tricorn hat. Um, again, he's going to look very 
out of proportion if you're taking into consideration the flagpole and the fireworks, but that's okay. Uh, once you have your tricorn hat, so this is essentially kind of a series of rainbow shapes and curves. So that's the beginning part of a rainbow, then we curve down quickly, and then kind of a letter C that's been stretched out, backwards letter C. Now, his head is going to be about like this. Minutemen are typically shown with very squared off jaws. I have a very pointy chin. I wouldn't have made a good Minuteman. I, people would have looked at me and been like, meh, you don't, you don't have the right look for a patriotic American. How dare you? Can't help it. Some of us have pointy chins. All right, then I'm going to add in his eyebrows. We want our Minuteman to be very serious looking. We're going to give a nose coming down, two eyes right in the middle. I'm actually kind of doing these as controlled scribbles. Uh, usually I would be doing every last detail. Because it's small, I can get away with scribbling a little bit and kind of implying detail. So that's what I'm doing here. If you try to make every last detail on a face, um, most, more often than not, you'll come up short. Uh, if you can imply things and let the other person's brain fill it in, then you'll come out on top. Uh, so what I did was some very controlled scribbles there. Uh, you could make those little lines coming from the side of the nostrils down towards the mouth if you want. Uh, then we're going to make his collar and going into his jacket. A lot of people when they picture a Minuteman picture like the blue coat with the red um, red area around the buttons. That was actually a specific uniform that not very many people had. Um, that's kind of the simplified history version. Uh, I believe it was Rhode Island that had those. Might have been Delaware. It was one of the small states. I'm pretty sure it was Rhode Island that had the uh, blue and red. And not many other troops had anything even close to that. But it looks cool, so that, <laughs> that's why I think that's what gets remembered in history. Is it's tough to beat that look for uh, colonial troops being super patriotic, right? Red, white, and blue uniform, that's pretty cool. Um, here we're going to make the uh, cuff on the sleeve, and we'll put a couple buttons on that. And we'll do some quick wrinkles here in the jacket. Uh, and then we're going to just make a quick fist by making basically a backwards letter C that's kind of squared off and slightly rectangular. And then you're going to put three tiny little lines in to separate knuckles. And you're just going to make a kind of squared off rainbow shape there for the thumb. And I'm going to change the angle that I've got this musket going at. Something kind of like this. And then the handle is going to come down slightly. And the butt of the gun will be right there. Kind of like that. Fourth of July has always been my favorite holiday, partially because it's right before my birthday. 
Uh, so as a kid, I always loved that. I was always excited because my birthday was right around the corner and there were fireworks and I was like, yes, this is awesome. Um, but it's still my favorite holiday now because uh, I just love, America has had a very complicated history, obviously. Um, it's easy to kind of gloss over some of our mistakes as we celebrate the, you know, the, the greatness that comes along with it. Um, but I, I've just always loved the, I, I guess I'm a sucker for the branding of the American story, you know. Um, I love American history. Um, I've always been fascinated with the Revolutionary War and Revolutionary history, um, which I actually attribute quite a bit to one of my favorite artists, N.C. Wyeth. Um, he kind of made a career off of making this type of drawing right here. Uh, he would do them as paintings in children's books. Uh, if you've ever read Treasure Island, it's still my favorite book. Um, his illustrations in Treasure Island blew me away as a kid. His illustrations in the book Drums are so incredible. Um, and I, I feel like that right there is what got me into this period in history. Um, N.C. Wyeth just had such a way of of romanticizing this period uh, and making the people exactly the way you hope to see them uh, and I just got bit right right then as a kid um, and I'm, I'm still very interested in American history and actually really pretty much all history in in the 1700s uh, once once you get up into like the Civil War I don't enjoy that period of history quite as much, but Revolutionary War I absolutely love. Um, and then, you know, of course, as you get older, you kind of realize how, how terrible all of it is. As a kid, I just thought it was neat. Um, but then as I got older and really started reading, um, I have a huge collection of history books. I know, laugh all you want, but it's what I'm into. Um, but as you, as you get older and you really start learning about the period and, you know, what people were going through, it's kind of cuts through some of that romantic vision of how we just suddenly were our own country and everything worked out great and, you know, happily ever after. Uh, not, not exactly how it went. It was very hard fought. Um, we couldn't have done it without the French. <laughs> there, was, there was a lot that you don't necessarily learn in elementary school when they teach it. But a lot of the coolest details get left out. I highly encourage reading history books if you're into reading. So that way you're not only entertaining yourself, but you're also going to learn some cool stuff. One of my favorite things to learn in history books is when you come across like the origin of a phrase that you never thought about where it came from, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, no way, that's where that phrase came from. I guess most people wouldn't be excited by that, but I enjoy learning that kind of stuff. Um, caught red-handed actually comes from uh, people having their hand branded if they had been caught for um, if you had stolen something uh, and you went to trial if you could read a certain passage from the Bible uh, they would have you read a specific passage that was a, about um, changing your ways and they were convinced that if you could read that then surely you would, in fact, change your ways. Uh, but before they let you off the hook, they would brand your hand. Um, and then if you got caught again, you were caught red-handed because your hand has that scar there. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that I love learning in history books. Um, also, this period of history, here's a weird fact. A lot of British soldiers were actually uh, not the cleanest and the reason was they believed that 
having dirt on them would help uh, protect them from getting sick, uh, which seems ridiculous now, but at the time nobody really knew. Um, and so that was kind of the belief of a lot of soldiers. And so there was a lot of uh, kind of weird superstitions and stuff. Um, but so there were some soldiers that, you know, didn't really get proper um, hygiene stuff going on. Uh, it's easy to think it's ridiculous now, but I guess at the time they thought it was kind of normal. All right, so there is our Minuteman. Sorry, I didn't really explain what I was doing a whole lot as I was going on that one because I was too busy rambling. Uh, you can give him a saber as well if, if you want. Although um, most Minutemen would not have also had a sword. This would have been somebody in very high standing to have a sword as well. or somebody old enough to have fought in the French and Indian War, I guess. You can put a little um, doodad there on his hat. I don't know what that's called. All right. That one just kind of ended. Sorry. <laughs> All right, happy Independence Day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed following along as we learned how to draw the flag, some fireworks, and a Minuteman that is not necessarily in proportion with everything else. Hope you enjoyed following along. Tune in again next time. Happy Independence Day. Thanks for watching. Park Street Books is proud to sponsor the Mike Page Doodle Club. Park Street Books is an independent children's book and toy store. With nothing electronic in the store, Park Street Books encourages kids to read, play, and unplug. Find them locally at 504 Main Street, Medfield, Mass. Open Monday to Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or visit parkstreetbooks.com no matter where you are. That's parkstreetbooks.com.